Welcome to Straight Talk. I'm Peter Martin. I'm delighted to say my special guest is Aidan McGeady. It's only an hour show, so I won't go through all the clubs he's played for, but he's at Air United at the moment. Um, we've got lots to talk about. Uh, I'm really looking forward to having a chat with you. Uh, is it a career fulfilled or a career with more than a few regrets? Interesting question to start off with. Uh, I don't think you can really look back on having any regrets, can you? Everything happens for a reason. Is there times where uh, I could have handled things differently? Yeah. But would I be where I am today if I didn't? Maybe not. So I'm 37, I'm still playing. A lot of my mates have retired. I've got the option now of, well, I've got another two years of playing as well as learning and getting the experience of the other side of football, which I'm quite passionate about as well, so uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with what I've done, yeah. Yeah, you're one of those players for me who I was brought up watching that you thought they were on every street corner, somebody who's worth paying money to get in to see, mm. um, you know, in in maybe 70s and 60s and 70s, they call them a Tanner Ball player. Mm. Um, but somebody who... Is it obvious to term that one, a Tanner Ball player? Uh, well, not if you're Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson was considered a Tanner Ball player. That was in the 60s, though, wasn't it? Yeah. A Tanner Ball player these days is derogatory, no. Is it like a... Uh, is a bit in it. Is it like a sand, a sand dancer? Sand dancer, yeah. Uh, Right, but, let's, yeah. let's say I was born in 1965, yeah, so I yeah. think Tanner was a compliment, oh, because okay. if I was paying to get in to see somebody, you know, it's like Lubomir Maravchik traps the ball with his back end. Okay. Celtic, I'm, a, I'm a maverick. Celtic beat Hearts 2-1, I go to anybody, can you remember the end of the game? And they go, no. And it's like your drawback against Aberdeen. Mm -hmm. Everybody goes away talking about it. So that's my impression of a Tanner ball player. Somebody who gets bums on seats, mm -hmm. excites them, and it's worth paying to get in. Mm -hmm. Is that is that the way you would see it? Is that the way you would like people to remember you? Uh, if, oh, if I mention Jimmy Johnson as a Tanner ball player, then, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think there's a lot more to football than just that. Uh, cohesion, being part of a team, being part of a winning team, winning things, playing at Euros, Lots of different things, but ultimately, yeah, like like I said, there probably would be seen as a bit of a maverick with maybe a bit of a edge of a personality to go with it as well. Yeah, um, from my point of view, when I look back and I can remember everybody talking about you when you were younger, everybody was saying, "There's a player in the you know Celtic I've got that he's just unbelievable." People couldn't wait to see you coming into that first team. Mm -hmm. Did you did you sense all that hype at the time? Were you trying to keep a lid on it? Were you fairly grounded and say, well, I'm, I'm just loving my, my football. I'm going to go and not listen to the noise that's around me. No, like, uh, I, I, did, I was aware of it, yeah. I was aware of it, but in a way it was just not detrimental, just a lot of pressure on myself to like, imagine I didn't. Be like what? What an absolute waste! Yeah. Like, so I, I suppose I, I sacrificed in from the age of probably thirteen, fourteen, fifteen up to the age I got in the first team. My whole goal was just to be a first team player at Celtic. And I mean, you meet guys in the pub, don't you? Or you meet guys that you came across. Oh, I played against you. Oh, I have my knee. Or oh, bad luck, my face didn't fit. All this sort of stuff. I didn't want to have any of those excuses. So. My whole goal was just being a first team player at Celtic, and luckily I was, I was, I was able to do that through. Listen, there's a lot of things that go along with it. There's, there's luck, there's skill, there's talent, there's hard work. You need everything to happen at the one time, and fortunately for me, it did. Uh, I'm proud to say that I've played over 250 games for Celtic coming through the academy. How many players have done that? Two, three, four. So, and then we sold on and made the club good money and everyone was happy, so. Yeah. Um, how much was it, was it a bonus having your dad as a former footballer? Or was, there, was it, it, it was, I couldn't say, I wouldn't say a hindrance because your family are always supportive of you anyway. Was it a, was it a bonus because he gave you a little bit of an insight? 
Uh, I, no, listen, there was probably a bit of both as well. That there was uh, at times it would be it would be be hard like, with a football a football dad. I mean, like, my, my son my son plays football and. Uh, I'm kind of I can be hard on him as well sometimes when I realise he's only he's only eight or he's just he's he's just turned nine. But it's in a way it's good because you you probably get access to a lot of things that other normal parents who think they know football. Well, everybody knows football, don't they? Yeah. Everybody you speak to knows everything about football. So <laughs> uh, you get access to things that you know my dad probably quite incessant on me like working on my left foot and things like that which opens up a variety of things and a variety of different positions that you can play as opposed to just being right footed Th things like that, that and I try and do the same with my own son but it's uh, it's harder because like, my son goes away to training and listens to the coaches more than he listens to me and I'm like you do realise I actually play football <laughs> you know what I mean so I do realise I play football but uh, no, it was a bit of both really a bit of both Probably more 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 good than than, than bad. Obviously, but there was times where you, you have you have arguments with your parents and games you don't play well and 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 things like that. It was probably more. How, how would I describe it? But parents nowadays, might be, non football parents of non or non football background would just be it's a game, it's training, it's you enjoy it, whatever, go home. Uh, whereas it would be a bit more, a bit, a bit more of a, a lingering feeling there if I didn't play well or did play well. Listen, I'm probably my biggest fan as well. So, uh, yeah, probably helped more than more, more than not. Yeah. Mm, can you hear echoes of your dad when you're teaching your own son? <laughs> <laughs> so, sometimes, sometimes, yeah. Sometimes uh, I look at him, I go, I'm trying. I'm thinking he's going to be the finished article at nine years old, <laughs> and it's like a. Uh, people probably tell you I probably never learned to track back well may maybe still still might not have learned to track back but the age of 21 22 was probably when the penny dropped for me when Strachan was like well you're a bit of a luxury player you can't well, you can't play in my team it's just been a left winger who gets the ball when he wants it and beats players you've also got to do that side of the game but then I'm going my son's nine so I never knew that when I was nine you know what I mean so uh, did you think Gordon was wrong when he said that to you at the time? No, uh, no, no, he, he wasn't. He, no, he wasn't. He, he was right. He was right. Uh, he was wrong on a lot of other things, <laughs> <laughs> in my opinion. But uh, but no, on, on that probably not. No, it's probably what I needed. Yeah. Here's a right good argument about it. You're, if you bristled at Tanner Ball, you're going to bristle at this one because yeah. Gordon Strachan, as a player, when um, when I would go and see him play. I thought, oh, he's a genius. He's just brilliant. You know, he to be fair, he was still like he still used to join in the boxes with us when he was manager, and he was still one of the best players in the boxes, like in the like rondos nowadays. Yeah. Uh, he was still one of the best players in the boxes. Like, would never really give the ball away. You could tell, like, you could tell he was a a top player. Top player. Mm. I, I see. <laughs> this will kill you, but I see great similarities that between like the two. <laughs> You definitely don't look like him, <laughs> but you, I see great similarities because he was unbelievably skillful. He was hot headed. He wouldn't be afraid to have his moments with Fergie, even at Aberdeen or, Dun or, or uh, down at Manchester United. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I can see if you've got that it's much not, talent. No, that's, that's fair, fair comparison. Yeah. You know, yeah. is that maybe where sometimes he's actually. Uh, <coughs> Yeah, maybe, maybe. It's like, looking back at it now. It's like I've I've spoke about it before, and he probably has as well. I think I think the last time I listened to him talk about it, it was did we fall out? Yeah. Do players fall out with managers? Yes. Did I think he was talented? Yes. Did he work hard? Yes. Um, yeah, just there, there was some things that happened that I felt were too hard. Uh, I felt sometimes I get treated slightly differently. That's not a pity me case, but. Uh, there were certain things that happened that I felt mm, that doesn't happen to other players. That's happened to me, but maybe he's seen a little bit of himself in me and thought maybe I need to be extra hard on him to get the most out of him because he's ah, it's, I can kind turn up at training when I feel like it and do what I want and take the piss or whatever. Maybe he felt he had to do that to get the best out of me. And to be fair, I, I, I won player and young player the year under him as manager, uh, but I also did feel that I had to perform, 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 perform 
to a really, really high standard to where I was undroppable because if I didn't, I always felt I would be first or set, pretty much first out of the team. Yeah. Whereas Nakamura, Nakamura's, <coughs> Nakamura was an unbelievable player, uh, unbelievable talent, but uh, Nakamura also had a lot of bad games as well at Celtic. Yeah. And I remember away games and things, but and they would just kind of get swept under the carpet, but if it was like Falkirk away, it's a tough game, the pitch was bad, and Naka would get whipped after 60, and maybe I'd get whipped after 70, Naka would start the next game, and, and then I wouldn't, and I would always go, I feel like Naka gets preferential treatment to me, or to be fair, Naka Mira could whip one in, in the top corner from 25 yards from pretty much anywhere around about the box, so that maybe gave him the edge on that one, but I just felt, so, like, not Naka Mira as an example, just certain players got slightly different treatment, I felt, to, to what I got, yeah, was there a particular one moment? I mean, I, 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 the amount of players I speak to who say, "Oh, there were some absolute belters with it because of your, you, you know, your yeah, fiery yeah, character." Yeah. Was there a moment that sticks in your mind? You think I'll never forget that day. It was just mental. I probably spoke about it. Yeah, the, the, the probably woman I was suspended for. Uh, I got suspended for two weeks. And I got a two weeks. I got a two weeks wage fine as well. So. Uh, that was, in hindsight, yeah, that in hindsight was, was not the right thing to do from my point of view, but it was a, a culmination and a boiling up of a few years of things going the way they were going and I just kind of probably had enough and, and just kind of exploded to an extent and then everything came out and then it was like, <laughs> I genuinely I was thinking I'm done, like I'll never play for Celtic again, but to be fair to striking, after my two week suspension, I think he was kind of quite fair and was like, oh, by the way, you're, you're back training the first team, so that's it done. So, f yeah. it's fair enough that way. I mean, these things happen in football. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, you know, you won't be the first or the last to have a, a major blow up in a, in a dressing room. Mm -hmm. Let me take you back to the point where you get in this side because it's mm -hmm. Martin O'Neill. Um, <clears throat> You know, I looked at your list of managers, and honestly, when you eventually go on to become, if you become a manager, or if you mm -hmm. have that ability to guide a, a great, great number of people, what a list you've got of guys that you've played under. It's incredible. Yes, I mean, Trapattoni uh, yeah, at a national yeah, level, legends. you know, Martin O'Neill, Gordon Strachan, uh, the list goes on, yeah, Roberto uh, Martinez. Martinez, and I am any. Uh, even Cart like, like Valerie Carpine in Russia. Yeah. Old like, quite quite a youngish manager. He's manager of the Russian team just now, obviously yeah. you don't it's probably don't want to talk about the, the Russian national team at the minute, but We he, talk about him in this show and don't right, worry about he's, that. He's he's the <laughs> manager of the, the national team just now in Russia. But he was ma he was a manager that signed me. Uh really, really old like old school Russian uh, dictator like almost in a way, which is <laughs> coincidental. Uh, <laughs> But like, uh, like it was good for me, but then also it was it was hard work as well at times. Uh, but he was a, a, like an amazing player as well. He used to join and train with us and smoke forty fags a day, and he was still like one of our best players. And he was like forty five at the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a, a lot of good managers. Which uh, like if I if I go down the route of coaching or managing, uh, which as I'm getting older, you know, the things you see you go. You take little things that you think are good from different people you've worked under. Uh, like Emery, for example. Like I got on really, really well with Emery at the time. But Emery, Martinez to an extent as well, they were kind of doing things now that... They were doing things back then that people are starting to do now and is the norm now. For instance? Uh, for instance, Emery was really, really strict and rigid on shape and set pieces to the point where it would just be like, oh my God, man, any chance that a wee games? You know, but like, <laughs> He's a five or side game. Ah, any chance that wee games or something like that, or like some shooting practice or something, but very, very like rigid and detailed in what he was doing. But you're going back like 2010, 11, 12, 10 years ago, but now everybody's doing video analysis. Video analysis now is the norm. Uh, like secondary recovery is the norm. It's These were all things that were implemented 10, 12 years ago, which we were doing. Martinez was kind of doing this stuff. Uh, false fullbacks, false nines, uh, inverted fullbacks, all this sort of stuff was like 
a long time ago. Yeah, and when you when you break in, and, and we'll touch on some of those managers and your experience, but when you break into the Celtic side, mm. Martin is a different kind of manager because mm. of all the players that I've interviewed who've experienced him, and you know, obviously I've sat down and talked to them at great length as well, he wasn't very much on the, you know the, the grass coaching he was very much a case of someone who for me was the type of guy that could deliver a speech or a one-to-one -one with somebody just to make you put your head through a brick wall for him that's mm -hmm. that's the sense did you get that when you were a young boy yeah it, like he had that aura of uh which i think i think i think most managers have to have that aura of that's a manager as a young like oh, that's Martin O'Neill that's a manager and you'd be scared walking past him in the corridor and then when you got in the first team you would see he would be kind of like his coaches Steve Wolfell John Robertson take training and a way it, it was good as well because we had a really good team we had a really good team full of really good players like men like real men to break into that team was like is I, I'm proud of, like when I, mean, I tell people like, like oh when did you break into Celtic and I'm like well Larson, Sutton, Thompson, Petrov, Mialbe, Agat, Lambert. It's, I'm going, what was some team? And I'm like, no, it was, it was some team. Great learning curve for you. I, I like became a man, like either sink or swim mentality a little bit, like where you would get tested. Uh, I didn't say Lennon, Lennon was probably the, one of the hardest or one of the harshest on the young lads as well, but sink or swim mentality a little bit. Can you handle it? Yes. Then uh, you, you gain the respect of the players. Martin probably was more of a, a hands-off day-to-day manager, whereas like in football's like, has football evolved. People say it has, but it's still the same game. Now it's passing through lines. It's this. It's that. That was all done back then as well. Yeah, it was still all back. That it was still. It just probably wasn't worked on as much as now. It's a bit more of a box ticking exercise. I feel unless you're really, really going to do it. It's all, we'll, we'll do a set of pieces on the Friday, right, we've done that, right, so if we concede that it's not our fault, it's the player's fault. <laughs> um, th little things like that, but he was more, I, I felt, motivator. Yeah. Managed the dressing room really well, managed the players, managed the expectations, managed that dressing room of big personalities, mm -hmm. even with Ireland as well, the exact same. Uh, but people would say, oh, oh this old school manager old school in terms of compared to nowadays where everyone's a young a, a kind of youngish breed of manager and they've got their own ideas and tactics uh, but for, for me I thought it was really good yeah. well, I really enjoyed it I, I like that Celtic, that first season that, that was my one and only season with I made my debut in the season before and then played that whole season uh, we obviously lost the league last day of the season but won the Scottish Cup but like Really, really enjoyed it. It was a team of men. Like at that point, you make about men. As you're obviously a young boy, mm. was there a was there an individual? I mean, everybody talks about Larson, but was there an, an individual on the side that you you were thinking to yourself, "Go, I would have loved to have been prime Aiden Ed McGeady playing alongside this guy every week." An individual. Uh... <sighs> well, the the obvious one would probably be be Larson, wouldn't it? Like, I I made my debut with Larson, but then it was a couple of games, and then he, then he, I think he went to Barcelona. Probably probably would be Larson, but then I played a, a lot of good players like Petrov, like Lambert was brilliant for me as well, especially coming through because Lambo used to play the reserves because Kenny was his mate, Kenny McDowell was his mate, so Lambo would play every game for the reserves, and it would just be like, watch what I'm doing here. This will help you. I'd play centre mid sometimes with Lambo in games. It felt yeah. like at Airdrie. Lambo was really good. Uh, Lenny was really good. Very probably underrated. Uh, Sutton, Bellamy. Like and of course the other great thing about it is not, not one that you've mentioned was shy about coming forward. They all had strong personalities. No, not at all. Huh? No. <laughs> well, that's what I mean about Martin O'Neill. It was a... Uh, other managers would, would struggle to manage that dressing room. Yeah. But he had that respect and authority that he was able to manage the expectations and manage the players, whether it, whether it was a, a listen, we've beat Livingston 3 0 today. Listen, just a, off, to, off to Wednesday. Yeah. You know, things like that, which nowadays is, is slightly gone from football, 
but the players would then go, that's absolutely brilliant. So next week we play, let's do the same again and let's let's do everything we can to get that again and do everything we can to run through a brick wall for this manager. Yeah. That's that's why I always find the managers. I, I just don't get why managers would want to annoy, like, annoy players, and I don't know. There's a way. There's a way of doing things and doing things by the book and recovery and, and tactics and uh, training load. All these sort of kind of these sorts of things. But at the end of the day, if your players buy into what your your philosophy and buy into what you're trying to do, and they like you, you it's half the battle. Yeah, absolutely. It's half the battle. Uh, I can remember you walking up onto the stage at the PFA Player of the Year Awards, mm -hmm. double whammy, young player and player of the year. Not many people achieve that. Um, Sean Maloney. Sean Maloney was another one. Is that your best season? Was that the season that you just thought, I, I, am, I know where I am, I'm, I know yeah. what I'm... Yeah, just, uh, I don't know, maybe gained a half a yard, a yard of pace, maybe work, doing a lot of extra work with uh, Gregory Dupont, who... Was was like a sports scientist at the time. Don't know. I just felt like I could, instead of slowing down, I could just run past players. We had a really good season, Champions League as well. Uh, end up winning the league last day of the season. Yeah, just that 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 probably before that I played a lot of games, but that was the season where I was like, well, I'm playing every week now. Yeah, uh, like I know I'm playing every week. Uh, See, in that season, can I pick up on something you just said there? There's a lot of hard work. And and that for me, for you know, players that I love watching, you, you try and tell people it's it's like an old sports mo movie I watch where <clears throat> Robert Duvall turns around to Robert Redford and says, "Talent ain't enough, kid. You got to work hard." It's a an Eric Cantona waiting behind. It's a David Beckham waiting behind. Is that something that you were conscious of the fact that yeah, I know I've got the skills, I know I've got the tricks, but the the other areas is where I've got to really work hard. Where maybe some people would not associate that with you? Yeah, well, they, they, they either do or they don't, but I, I think if, if you get to the age of myself, of what it, the age I'm at now, I'm doing something right. Uh, and I have been doing something right because most other players my age or my, my mates retired at 32, 33, 34. Yeah. But were you working as, were you really intense at that point? You said you knew you were going to be in every week, but were you working hard yeah, in yeah, the background? Quote, quote, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I was, yeah, yeah, I was, I, I wasn't. So everybody, everybody will have the odd session where they they, they they slip off early because they've had a bad session or their head's gone or something's happened. But that was the season I remember. I don't actually remember pulling sleds and working on things that were probably nowadays a lot of people do. It's kind of they're on the mill stuff. A sports scientist will take you for extra things now. But back then I was, yeah, and and, and, and that is true though. It's it's not enough, is it? It's yeah. Not. Yeah. And when you look, that a lot of people find out it's not. Yeah. I mean, in that in that period, you're playing every week, Champions League football. Um, is there a game that sticks out in your memory? You thought I'm at it. Benfica. Yeah. Home. Yeah. You just did you was that a point where you walked onto the park and oh, felt? I didn't walk onto the park expecting it to go the way it did. I hoped it did, but just. Just like where everything came together, everything I'd done worked. I, I scored it. it was a, I took a deflection, but I scored it on one nil. But I just remember like getting the ball and running from my own half with the ball and just like running past players like they weren't there. Uh, probably, I think it was the first time I think I was going back after the game and I was listening to Super Scoreboard, which was on in the car, and it was like I think Joe Miller talking about and oh, he'd he'd make it his worth. 10, 15 million after that and I'm thinking Christ, no one's ever said that about me yeah you know it was just that, that I think that was the realization of if I'm doing it at this level then phew, that, that's that's what you're brought up to be I said well in my era anyway that was what Tommy Burns drilled into you to be a, a Celtic Champions League player like not just be a Celtic SPL player be a Celtic Champions League player who's doing it in the Champions League for Celtic that was probably the game where I was like not arrived but I was like well I can actually this was bit of a kind of turning point for me a little bit. It's great that you mentioned Tam. Mm. He was he, he wore his heart on his sleeve mm. and you know, he, he was one of those guys who loved playing football even after he'd stopped. Mm -hmm. Um and he loved players like you. How much of an influence did he have on you in the background? Oh it, it, like obviously you you you'll speak to a lot of a lot of the Celtic youth team kind of reserves of that era. 
that Tommy took to do for Tommy took a, a real. I mean, Tommy wouldn't leave the training room would he really to like been there all day and then he'd be like at night he'd be taking under fourteens, fifteens and even though he wasn't supposed to, he'd be doing something. But for us he was for me he was a, a massive influence. Just little things resonate with you. Little things that he said to you, the little thing that he said to me. I remember coming off it I probably spoke about this one before, but it was like coming off he was a right good buffer between me and the manager to be fair, but between me and his tracking. But Coming off on a game, it was at half time or something like that, and I've probably having a probably having an average game and a bad game. Defenders tackled me three or four times, and I'm going like you know like having a little bit of a moan to myself. And he's like, and he's like, don't don't like, don't worry about it. Like no one else in this team can do what you can do. So all it takes is you to go past the fullback once, cross, we score one one nil. That's all you need to do. And I was like, he's actually right, like you can get so you can get tackled nine times in a row. Doesn't matter. The one time you get past, everybody remembers it and we win. See you later, you're up the road, three points. Yeah. That's your job. <laughs> and I was like, he's actually right. Like the, this is this just from like twenty odd years ago. Like just a little co small conversation like that. But aside from that, just like coaching and mentality and good few good few run ins as well. Well which I probably needed as well. <laughs> good few run ins and Tam was fiery as well. Oh, you don't need to tell me he was fiery. He was fiery. So losing. He was fiery, so uh, no, like really, really good. And I think every every young player that came through at Celtic would say the same thing. Yeah, you mentioned the high of that season with your player of the year, your young player of the year. Was there a point at Celtic where you thought, right, I've got to go, the game's up? It was probably. It was would have been the season I left. Would have been the season I left. I didn't. I didn't necessarily want to go. I just. I, I came through at Celtic and I felt after that season we had obviously Mowbray, Tony Mowbray took over, then we had Lenny and we had a good end to the season but then we went out to the Scottish Cup the semi final against Ross County. I was 20, just on 24. I'd kind of always had in the back of my head I want to try something else. I don't, I don't I'd, I'd, I'd look back in my career and regret it if I never tried England or tried somewhere else. Yeah. After I mean, what what else was there really to 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 win at Celtic as well? And I felt, and it wasn't just me. It was, it was everybody was kind of in agreement. It wasn't like it was I want to leave, let me leave. It was yeah. Everybody was like, do you know what? It's probably it's the right time. Like your stock's high. We'll get good money for you. We can reinvest in the club. The club can go again. You can go wherever wherever your your head or your heart takes you. Yeah, but Moscow. <laughs> yeah, Mo yeah, well, Moscow. Yeah, it was it was a bit of a bizarre one because we played Spartak the year before in the Champions League, and I think I done quite well against them. And I think I was on the radar after that. And then when it came about, it was kind of like, and we Celtic had already kind of accepted that Mo Moscow Russian clubs don't mess about. They were like, "How much do you want?" Celtic were like, "Want this? No problem. There you go." So it was then down to me. And at the time, I was kind of like, "Well." I wouldn't mind. I'd probably rather go to England. Yeah. And at the time, there was only a certain few clubs that were going to pay close to what Moscow were going to pay. So it was kind of a bit of an ultimatum. Like, well, you either stay and you're playing against them in Escali away first game of the season, or you take a leap of faith and go across. And, and I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll go across for a few days and I'll have a look at the setup and I'll have a look at the city and stuff. And I did that and I was like, oh, this is. Be really good. Yeah. Champions League football, different style of football, bit of a slower tempo, a bit more technical. Nice. So like, and and the, the the biggest thing that I probably look back on is I go, well, I stayed only four years out there, and I could have stayed. Yeah. And I could have sang for other teams when I was out there as well. So, uh, but then I felt as I got older, you're a wee bit out of sight, out of mind over there without Champions League, Europa League every single season. I would I would come home at Christmas time and I was off, and people go, oh, where are you now? And I'd be like, well, I'm. Just Still in Russia. Did that stick in your throat? And I'd just be like, well, that's kind of, no, it's just, no. that was the way it was because yeah. Russian football is not televised over here, is no. it? So, uh, no, but it was no, no regrets at all about it. What was Valerie like? He, he was he was good, and then when he wasn't, he was, <laughs> he, he, he was, he was, he was hard. Uh, he, he was, he was good for, he was good for me, he was good for me. Uh, we had run ins. Clashes, he, he's 
quite a quite a, a fiery, quite a volatile character himself, and probably didn't help that we had a lot of Brazilians and South Americans who who kind of football football to them is football is football, man. I'm just like that's football. I'll live life and enjoy life because yeah. we've came from we've came from nothing really. So. Yeah. Uh, but no, it was good. We like the Champions League when I arrived there. We we got to the quarterfinals Europa League uh, against a really really strong Porto team. We lost ten two in aggregate, five one five one. It was Hulk for Carl, the whole gang before they all split up. Uh, Champions League after that, we got Barcelona again because we always did every single time. Uh, just the unfortunate thing is we probably. We never, we never won anything because the the rule was you, you know you have at the time you had to have six uh, six Russian nationals in your starting team, and we had very good foreigners and we had good Russian players, but Zenit, CSK paid the premium for the top top Russian players. Yeah, you know you see players going between two Russian clubs for forty million euros, which is unheard of. Like, but it would be or like Zenit would have the best Russian players so generally they would have the best all round squad as well as the foreigners as well Hulk, Axel Vitzel, all these guys who, yeah. uh, but re like enjoyed it the, the testing times as well but it, Did it you like good. the culture? The, cu the culture was good a great place to live Moscow uh, traffic traffic was like, like you talk about London times London by 10 uh, just Traffic was that you spend half your life in a car or half your life travelling to away games. Uh, regimented in the way that you'd stay overnight before games. We'd stay in the hotel. You had your, uh, the training room. You had your own room, so you stay in your own room. So spent a lot of time away. Yeah. Did you have uh, your family with you? Yeah. So <coughs> uh, maybe you get was born across there. Uh, just out of curiosity, was she is she in a dilemma at the moment? Is she going to play for Russia, or will she? No, Russia, no. Russia doesn't do dual citizenship. No, all right, all ah, right. It doesn't so, <laughs> and, and you can't even so you, you can't even have even though she was born there because none of her parents are Russian. She can't get a Russian passport. Right, good even, insight. Even if she was even because she was born there. Yes, yeah, so that, that was a real time. So we to we to go to the British Embassy and and. Uh, Register. Get, uh, register and get a, a British passport. Yeah. It was easier anyway because R Russia, Russians need a visa to go a lot of places. It's like Egypt, Turkey, and like uh, United Arab Emirates. It's kind of waived, but everywhere else you need a visa, and it's a you know it's like getting a visa. It's not easy, is it? Absolutely. I know what it was like setting up a camera in the middle of Red Square. Within a minute and a half, I was surrounded. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Um, did, did you play good football over there? Was a lot of great reports coming out. A lot, lot lots of people wouldn't have known because yeah. you're not in the public eye no, was, you know guys like us we're thinking I wonder how he's getting on yeah so you see, see how he's getting on typing into Google whatever yeah that no, was good and I, I had a really good rapport with the fans across there as well uh, the unfortunate thing was that I only had six months left my contract and I wasn't going to sign again uh, so I'd been kind of put back to the kind of under 18s for the last couple of weeks of the season before the season stopped and then it was like listen if you come back you're on the under 18 schedule which is like pre-season training camps in Turkey yeah with under 18s and I was like well I think it's time to leave so and then obviously Everton came up so yeah. Everton's the best car park I've seen uh, for cars it was uh, I mean <laughs> I remember getting down I'm looking at the cars and I love cars you the best one? Oh, well, I'm looking at yours and I'm <laughs> thinking now honestly I, was, I, I looked and I, I saw Samuel Eto's yellow Ferrari mm. um, to be fair Nasey didn't have a flash car and he said to us wait till you see my giddies because he's tight <laughs> And I, and I, I looked at your car and I just thought to myself, if there are two cars that I absolutely loved growing up, one was a Porsche and the other one was a Ford Mustang, yeah, and boy, you could hear yours coming into the car. Oh, no, it was it was a, a an impulse buy, uh, buy like looked looked amazing, but she tried to drive it. <laughs> <laughs> I told you about the time it cocked co co out when I was going to Bothell from. Like East School Bride down to Los Andon, past Andon, Celtic game was on, and I was going right, and the car conked out just because it was, and it's had a, had an old school choke, yeah, and all this sort of stuff, and I was like, this is way more hassle than it's worth than this car. <laughs> Time to get rid of it. Oh, right. <laughs> did but you did you enjoy Everton? 
<laughs> Palace of a good, good club, good people. Uh, unrealistic expectations from the fans, I felt. Yeah. Uh, of, of course, because you're competing with Liverpool's a, a mile away. Yeah. But what was your impression of the team? We had a good team. Like this. So the season I joined, we I joined in the January. We finished fifth. Uh, we should have we should have really finished fourth. Uh, we lost. I think we lost the last three games of the season. Or drew against Arsenal. I think we lost the Palace at home. If we'd have just drawn one, or won one of those games, I think we were guaranteed fourth. Uh, which now, when you look at it, you go Champions League. Aye, it was Champions League. So, but. It's a, a good club, good club, good training ground, good people. Uh, yeah, the biggest thing I would say is like the fans, like unrealistic, unrealistic expectations for for what's there. Although saying that, if you look back now, Everton spent an awful lot of money. But if you're signing for Everton now, you're signing for them because the top six don't want you. Yeah. And even, maybe you could even go further down that list now. You could now. Uh, yeah. I just think their strategy over a long period of time has been splashing cash in players that just haven't really lived up to their billing. No, no, I mean, no, you could involve me in that, but I didn't cost a lot of money. I yeah. was, but I remember coming back from being alone and uh, Balassi was, Ronald Koeman told me it's going to be difficult if you get minutes. He was quite fair and honest, quite fair and honest with me. Uh, didn't really like him, I thought it was quite arrogant uh, but he did he was at least quite honest and fair with me he just said listen you're, you're going to find it difficult to play but you've got a contract so it's up to you but I remember that same day Balassi came in and we just signed him for like 30 million from from Crystal Palace and I was and not like and I knew Balassi was a, was, a, was, a, was a good player had quality but I was thinking why have we went for Balassi and not Zaha you yeah. know like but that, that Balassi did okay, maybe at Everton and Spells, but probably seen out his full contract and went on loan loads of different times and I don't know, just the, the strategy, the model, the sporting director, change of ownership, all, the, all those sorts of, th sorts of things. And then you look at the last two seasons, you go, avoided relegation probably in the last day or two days yeah. of, of the of the season, which I is which is not really long for a club like Everton. No, exactly. And by the way, they've had more than a few of those days. You know, I can look back to the <clears throat> Joe Royal being the manager trying to get them, uh, you know, escaping by the skin of their teeth. Footballers, part and parcel of it is the fact that when you're wanted, it's great. Mm. When you have to get to that line in the sand where you know time's up, you said, at Celtic, you're on the up. You've got choices of clubs. You, d you decide on Moscow. You go to Everton and then from there, mm. you've had a few loan deals before you eventually uh, chose Sunderland. This is just a personal view. And when I th when you chose Sunderland, I thought, no. No, that's you, yeah. Only due to the fact it's just me as, you know, as a guy well, looking on and thinking, he's so talented. He's <clears throat> I wanted you to do well at Everton. Um, but I looked and I thought, why is he joining Sunderland? You're better than that. And that's mm. just a personal thing because I look at your time there I mean, the fans loved you, but I just thought you were always a step. I thought you were a level up. Was that yeah, misplaced you, confidence in you? Uh, no, you, you, you listen. You can only you can only go to who wants you. I, I'd, I'd love to sign for Real Madrid. Yeah, they there. <laughs> so, uh, at the time, at the time, there was there was a, a few other teams, but in hindsight, I, I had to. I had the impression that Sunderland we'd just just been relegated from the Premier League and there was a lot of a there was a lot of hangover. Yeah. There was a hangover of players who were there from the Premier League who I'd been told that listen, we're getting rid of them, we're, we're going straight back up, we're, we're having a right go go straight back up. When I arrived there I was like, great club, great stadium, great facility, training ground, everything. Uh, plus I'd also had Simon Grayson at Preston. When I actually showed, when I, I thought, do you know what, like I had a loan spell with Sheffield Wednesday which didn't go very well. I actually left early because I was even getting left out of squads, and I was like, "I'm alone from Everton here, and I'm getting, I'm getting left out of squads." Was it ten games you played, wasn't it? Oh, not even that, that probably. Yeah. Uh, didn't see eye eye with the manager as such, so came back after that, and then it was like had my loan season at Preston. Simon Grayson probably had the I had the best season I'd had in probably three four years there. Loved my football. 
then he went to Sunderland and he phoned me and he said, would you want to come to Sunderland? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that first season was, as you've probably seen in the, the, the documentary and the the ownership and the change of ownership and the change of everything around about the club was uh, tumultuous, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, you, know was, you know what was striking about that, <laughs> that documentary when I watched it? Are you getting hit with the snowballs? No, apart from that, apart from that, I'm looking at it and thinking, right, if this is a fly-in-the-wall documentary and <laughs> McGeady is the character that I know he is, mm. we're going to have, you'll not be happy, there's going to be some, there's going to be some camera in your face uh, and you'll tell them what for. I didn't get that. All I saw every now and then did you not was get you walking in the background, I'm thinking, where are the bits with McGeady telling them exactly what the script is? Uh, no, no, look, it, that, you must that have was, been frustrated. Oh, well, that, that, was, that was one of the things that was, a lot of the players were frustrated with, with the, especially the first season. And you see the way TV works, it, it's clipped and then it's put back in at an earlier date yeah. when really it was taken at a later date but you must have seen when I spoke about Chris Coleman no did you I not see that no refresh my memory <laughs> refresh my memory well it was just like again though it was we were on a really bad run Chris Coleman was the manager at the time and I was kind of having a moment like the, the cameras caught me in the way of training and it was like hey, what do you think and I was like, I just feel like it's we come in and it's like we lose Tina on a Saturday and it's just like on a Monday everybody's laughing and joking, nothing said. It's just kind of like, right. Let's just move on to the next game. Yeah. But that interview was taken before we'd been relegated, but it was put in after we were relegated. Yeah. So it looked like I'm absolutely slaughtered on the manager for us being relegated. Uh, great. I I really listen. I I'd, I'd had the chance to move from Sunderland a few times as well, but up the way. Uh, yeah, up, yeah, up, up, yeah, up, yeah, up, especially when League One, yeah, up the way. Yeah. Uh, but I was like, do you know what, I kept, like, then Jack Ross came in, I really liked Jack Ross. Uh, then after that, it was just like, ownership was changing all the time, it was like, the model was changing all the time, it was, uh, is it older players, or are we going down the Brentford Brighton model? Which it seems to which which has as, as now there's a new sport director and there's a new owner in. Yeah. Uh, but like I really really liked it. I'd, like I said that I was really settled in the area. Like. And it's strangely enough though, you'd Lee Johnson. Uh, I'd, Lee, I'd, I'd Lee Johnson, yeah, and I had I had not even fallen out with Phil Parkinson. He 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 was the manager, but just he was kind of like almost I was his confidant where he would ask me things about the the dressing room and the the team and the dynamic. And then just one day I came in and it was like, oh, yes, you're, listen, yeah, 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 I don't want you around the place anymore. And I was like, excuse me, like, oh, what's happened? And it was just like, I just, I just feel like we, we, we don't need a personality like you. And I went, Gaffer, we've won two out of 15 since you've taken over. We've went out the Checker trade, which is obviously the the lower league cup, cup when they play yeah. 23s, FA Cup and League Cup. I'm a, f I'm a 15th in the league. Is this Phil Parkinson? Uh-huh. Yeah. So forgive me for not jumping through hoops, but... And then it was just, that was it. So then I went on to Charlton, came back, had a year left my contract, and I was going to... After, after Charlton, I was like, I went back down there during COVID, the season started back up and I was on a flat, I was in a flat and moan. Like, no shops open, no nothing, training, going home, coming straight home, my training gear on. Like really really like horrible times really to be honest uh, and then when I came back like the, the manager was trying everything he could to try and get me to leave and I was like no nah, I was like I'm not I'm not leaving unless it's something I really want to do yeah. but as time was going on I was like well I've never really I've never really run the risk of waiting till the window closes because I could have went to Australia still in some other windows I've never <laughs> I've never let the window close and then see how they react to me because yeah. So then when the window closed, things started to change a wee bit. It was like, right, what are we doing with Giddy here? He's, he's sitting in the 23s and... The pain nerves will need to play him. Well, it's, he's, he's earning this, he's whatever, yeah. and he's sitting in the 23s, can we utilise him more? Uh, and then as I was seeing results were going on, I was like, let's just see what happens. And then in a couple of weeks' time, you get, you get the sack and Lee Johnson took over and then... I'd went from not playing whatsoever to the Friday night he phoned me and he said, do you want to start tomorrow against Wigan? And I, and I, and I started and played 75 minutes. Yeah. And then from that point on, I played 
every 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 single game. Yeah. Much. Did you rate him then? Uh, at Sunday, at Sunday he was he was different to, to, to the, than he was at Hibs. He was a, a lot more a lot more hands on in terms of training things like that. A lot more detailed. Uh, good coach. A good a good coach in terms of putting on a session things like that, yeah, and sees things and sees how things can be changed. Uh, yeah, what you try to get me to say here? Yeah, no, uh, not not anything from the Sunderland point of view because it's an interesting it's an interesting look. Change. It, it, like if I've been to, <clears throat> if I've been if I'm being totally honest at Sunderland and, and I said this I said this to, to Lee Johnson. I went, do you know what? I, when people were disliking you and getting annoyed with you in the club and I would see why I would always kind of almost back you because I felt a bit of loyalty towards you because you brought me back Yeah. but in a way it was quite clever from him because it's a small win he brought me straight back in the fans were buzzing uh, I then felt a bit of loyalty towards him where I would feel indebted almost towards him a wee bit that was, that was the way I seen it he might tell you something totally different but if you look at it from that point of view, that probably was the way it worked. He also got me playing, and then we, I played really well from the end to the end of the season. So I think I only played from December to to the the, the, the May for the, the got to the playoff semi final, and I was in both both team both teams of the year from December onwards. Yeah, was that was that the toughest part of your career? Just the bits when you were out of favour. Is that a real test of your? Your own strength. The, sun, the Sunderland one. The Sunderland one was because I was still at Sunderland at the time, and the the manager never really explained why he he, he banished me to twenty threes, and then there was rumours going around of uh, certain things that happened in the dress room. I'd had a fight with the manager, and I was having to deal with everybody everywhere I went, asking me and telling me what had happened before. When, when, when literally nothing happened, yeah. that, that was the thing. It was just literally nothing happened. You at that point, <clears throat> I mean, I think you look back. You look back with great fondness at Sunderland. At the point when you've you're coming back to Scotland, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I can remember saying to somebody on on uh, our show here, because of the standard of Scottish football, mm -hmm. he he'll still be able to cut it. I don't care that he's thirty six. Mm -hmm. He'll be one of the best players in this in in this division. If you're fit, yeah. Uh, no, listen. I, I'd I'd like to say I agree with you as well, but I thought that the problem was I wasn't fit. That was the thing. I, and in a way, it was a uh, really frustrating season. Uh, out for four, four, five months with money, then come back, played five, six, seven games. Uh, then tore my hamstring, and then I, that was me done for the season. So. Hibs is a really good club. Uh, Hibs, is, Hibs is a really good club. Did you want to stay? Uh, as when I left, as as it stood, no, yeah, no, no. Uh, you had enough of the manager by then. Uh, I'd had enough of. I'd seen enough to know that I didn't want to stay. Uh, and look, that people might take that the wrong way and go, oh, well, we didn't want him anyway, or he was injured all the time, he was a waste of a wage, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but at that point, it was I was travelling through like an hour and a half, an hour and 40 minutes to Trinent to do rehab near enough every single day of the week, five, six days a week. Funny enough, a full season, yeah. if you think about it. Uh, there was a lot of things i seen that I, that I didn't like, that I just thought I don't... I, I, it's easy to say it now, or if Hibs offered me a contract, I'd say no to it. It's easy to say that now, but I, I, I didn't want to know. What did you not like? Uh, well, I probably don't need to answer that, do I? On the basis that he gets sacked? Yeah. Um, because did you see a different person this time around as the, the Hibs boss from the one that you seen at Sunderland? Or was it just you were in the same movie? Uh, there, 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 were, there were some slight differences. Uh, a lot less hands-on. A lot less hands-on uh, in terms of coaching and detail, in terms of the way we were playing. Uh, and I, I, look, I, 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 don't, I don't want to go down the route of slaughtering yeah. a manager yeah. either. And 
it's never nice when somebody loses their job. Uh, that's what happens. That's that. That's the, that's the job. If you put yourself forward as a manager, you have to. It's a results-driven business. You have to. You have to win games, and ultimately, ultimately, Hibs haven't done that so far. If you were a, if you were Aidan McGeady as the Hibs manager there, at the time you were there, what did you see was the main thing that you would like to have seen happen if you had your hands on it? Uh, if I had my hands on the the Hibs team and dressing room. Yeah. Uh, I'd have, I'd have worked on how we were going to play because I don't really think I don't really think well, okay I'll ask you the question how do Hibs play? Well I thought the first thing I think the, I think the first thing any manager should do with a club that's looking to try and build up you want, you, want, you, want you want to build results like, so you, you want to get results don't you so how, how do you, how's the best way to do that? For me make it difficult to get beat Okay, so I you build it from the back. Okay, so you would play probably a three, four, one, two, three, four, three, three, five, two, probably. Like, so you'd be solid at the back, yeah. near enough. In my opinion, that we probably did concede too many goals last season. Uh, if it was me and I'm not the manager, uh, I would have an identity of. Well, listen, I could be a manager soon. Who knows? I could be a manager in the future. This is the way I play. This is how I want you to play. If you don't do it, you won't play for me. So at least then the player knows. And by the way, see if you make a mistake doing whatever I'm asking you to do, I'll take responsibility for it. Yeah. I just, uh, yeah, I just felt that it was it was all a bit off the cuff, vague. If certain players turned up, if the opposition didn't turn up, if we played well, that's that's the way I, that that was the way I felt it was. Yeah. No surprise when you lost his job then. Um, not, I don't think you're a type of person to gloat anyway, but did you just feel as if they needed a change as well? Well, I, yeah, I, I think I, 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 don't, I don't read fans' forums or I'm not on Twitter or anything like that, but I've got friends who are Hibs fans and a lot, even even the players, I think, like last season, there was times where we thought, is, 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 is this it, is this it? And then we maybe pull us out of the bag. Uh, that's still, I mean, it's still very early on the season to be doing it, but maybe Hibs, Ryan McDermott's the sporting director there, Ben Kensel's the chief exec, maybe they've got someone else that they've got lined up who is maybe a bit more rigid, solid to play against, a bit more let's build from a base of not to get beat, and if we win 1 0, 2 0, great. Yeah, if you were yeah. you're in the Scottish game, you know managers that are out there. Who would you pick? A, a Scottish man, so a manager in the Scottish game. Who would I pick? <coughs> uh, well, I'm different though, because I'd want somebody to play proper football. So, <laughs> uh, I think obviously Stephen Robinson's done well with. He's done well with St Mirren, hasn't he? I mean, look, the bar. Should have been top of the league probably by the weekend. Uh, with a sure string, a sure string budget as well. <sighs> Malky McKay was suggested, wasn't he as well? Uh, if you're looking around the leagues, well, who knows as well? Like like D David David Gray's, David Gray's, and there is caretaker just now. It was, all, all he needs is a. A, f a few, a few good results, and who knows? Before like, he could be the manager. Yeah, as caretaker. As, <coughs> as caretaker, yeah. Yeah. I've got that right. He is in his caretaker. Yeah, he is. Okay, so that, that that was how that was how Lenny got his break at Celtic. <coughs> Len Lenny, Lenny was caretaker, and then we went on that run where we went on. Like I think we won every single game in the league. Next thing you know, he's a manager. Next yeah. thing you know, he's winning trophies, 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 trophies. So it could be David Gray, and I and I I, I like David. I think David. Has got standards. David's got standards. David's got seen a lot of things as well that I was seen and was agreeing with, and not going behind the manager's back or anything. But things in training that would would just be kind of brushed under the carpet a little bit. David would be seeing them and be kind of on the same page as me. So who knows? D David, David might have a chance at that as well. If he does well. You're in the twilight. What's your ambitions for here? Uh, well, the, 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 ambitions, the ambition would be to get promoted, obviously, but it's very geared towards not getting promoted, isn't it, unless you're first. 
it's geared towards keeping whoever's in the SPL in the SPL. I just think the whole format's got to change, to be honest with you. I think it'll be, even the SPL, the format is like what you play 38 games in the league and you finish 28th of May. You, if you're in the Championship in England, you play 46 and you finish on the 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th of May. You play more games. There was a couple of, couple of months last season at Hibs, we played we had two months where we had four games in two months. Two games a month, but like three weekends where we're having to arrange practice matches. And uh, I just think it's, it's it's geared towards keeping whoever's in the top flight in the top flight. My ambitions would be for us to get promoted. I'd want to be part of that team that gets promoted for the first time. And I think is it 43, 43 years back to the top flight. A uh, lot of football left to be played. A lot of work still to be done. Uh, but for me, the, foot, the, the the good thing is I'm still playing, and the other side of it is has been eye opening and interesting so far. Yeah, just before we finish international football, um, it was <clears throat> it was a rich period for you where you played in you know under good managers and, and lots of good players. Mm. Um, the right call. Do you feel as if sometimes when you took all that flack for all the wrong reasons in my book, do you do you look back at it and say, well, you know, would it, well, listen, would it, would it, would have made my my life a whole lot easier? I was at the garage yesterday actually, and we were some training at Moncton Services, and there was a a group of boys in a car, uh, just shouting stuff. And I'm the type as well that's even fan. I, I always I always feel that fans think they can say whatever they want to you in the street. And then when you say something back, it's all of a sudden you're, you're the bad guy. But yeah, I got, I got that yesterday, so I'm still getting it. I got it yesterday, a group of guys in, in a car shouted something at me, you know, the usual. Uh, and I just went What's like, the usual? Uh, oh, make it your... Can you swear on here? Yeah. Uh, make it your dick, make it your shite. And I went like, mate, let's put eight use crammed in on this and my there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then I think the guy who was driving the car was like, oh, why did you say that, mate? Because he was driving, it was the guy in the passenger seat that said it. Just things like that. Was At it least it wasn't sectarian. I <laughs> know <laughs> uh, it wasn't, no, but uh, that's the... It would have made my life a whole lot easier, but it was it the right call? Uh, I think I played at two, two European Championship finals. Close to qualifying for the World Cup twice with two playoffs. Obviously the first one was the infamous Terry on Rehan Ball and the second one was when we get uh, uh, Ericsson scored a hat-trick against us at Lansdowne uh, at the Aviva uh, just like got 93 92-93 caps uh, yeah it was the right decision loved, loved my time in Ireland away trips going away with, going away with lads were great made friends for life uh, on the flip side of it Scotland's a uh, the west of Scotland's a well, not even the west of Scotland. Scotland's a it's a poor, parochial country, isn't it? It's, so you get things. That, to be fair, since I've came back up, which was a year ago, you get you get the odd bit uh, away games and uh, the way I, the way I used to get it. But I think Christ, that was I left thirteen years ago. Yeah, some people have got long memories. Long memories. Yeah, I left thirteen years ago, but. Seeing that international side, did you like which? Who was your favourite manager? Was it Trapattoni? Uh, I, I, not, I listen. I liked, I liked the most. Steve, Steve Staunton got a really, really tough time because we lost five two to Cyprus. That was his last game away from home. It was seen as like the worst result in the club, the the, the country's history. Uh, Trapattoni was really good, but under Trapattoni, you really, really like you really. He had us well drilled, well organised, but you really, really had to work really hard in his system. Uh, but legend of a guy, like absolute legend of a guy. Did he like you? He liked me. Yeah, he, he liked me, but not just uh, not a legend of a guy because he liked me. Just a legend <laughs> of a guy, like for everything that he's done in football. Yeah, to just still be so down to earth and so calm, and it's that Italian demeanour, isn't it? Like warm, like warm people. Uh, Martin he was really good for me as well. Probably, I came off the back of that loan spell at Sheffield Wednesday and I cut my loan spell short and I left before the playoff final at Wembley. 
because I thought, well, I'm not going to Wembley if I'm not going to be in the st if I'm going to be sitting in the stand. So I just went home, and then he still picked me, probably based on the fact that I'd done well, f I'd done well for for him in the in the qualifying campaign, but I was a little bit apprehensive about whether I was going to make the squad or not. But played in Euro 2016, we got to last 16, played against France, winning one 0 at half time. Uh, France ended up winning two one. We got a man sent off, but it's hard, it's hard to differentiate. They all had different styles. They all had uh, they all had different strengths and and things that they would things that they would try and implement into the, the way they played. Martin he was was quite uh, like he said he as I said before he would oversee everything. Very perceptive. Would oversee everything in terms of training, what was happening, what was not happening. Trapatoni was still joining in ladder work drills, like in the warm up when he was like wow. 75. <laughs> that is incredible, isn't it? But he would go to his bed at half nine, so. <laughs> so, lads, so lads would be out. Here's my final question Aidan McGeary, the player that I enjoyed watching, and now Aidan McGeary, potentially in the future, there might be a manager. Um, what type of manager are you going to be? You know, how would you honest. handle somebody like yourself? Honest. I think there's there's a way of being. I think I think all players all they want is honesty. That's if you if you had any other player who's come on here, who's said anything different to that. All players want is honesty. Why gaffer can I? So I'm the gaffer, right? Yeah. Gaffer, why am I not playing on Saturday? Why am I not playing tomorrow? Or because last week I thought you'd done this wrong, I thought you'd done that wrong, I thought you'd done this wrong. Training your rebuild off it, whatever. Here's my reasons. Uh, you're not starting, but do me a favour. Come on on Saturday when you get a chance and prove me wrong. All right, cool. At least I know. Yeah. Instead of oh, the gaffer says I'm only playing. Be I'm not playing because he's changed formation and he's oh, he's he's maybe going to be using an inverted fullback. Or, or you want honesty? Yeah. Just be honest and. Uh, I would, uh, obviously everything, if you're a manager, it's what you've got in front of you. You can't try and play football, can you, without the personnel? But I think everybody's a football can control and pass. I think it's, I think it's quite, it's quite easy to be able to try and play football and implement a style of play and an, an identity. Like, you're listening, you might have a striker that can hit a barn door, but if you can, if you can show that you can do that. Yeah. That's, that's the way I would play. That's the way I would try and play. Yeah. Well, I have to tell you, <clears throat> it was enjoyable watching you playing football. If you're half as good as a manager, we're in for a great roller coaster ride. Well, we'll see. Aidan we'll McGeady, thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot. Cheers. <laughs> thank you. Cheers.